from MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. And it is 6 o'clock on this Friday. Thank you for watching Montana This Morning. I'm Andrea Lutz. Victoria Hill has the morning off. But Miller does not have the morning, morning. off. He is working overtime Ooh, on that weather. It's going to be busy. You know, today yeah. uh, we could see some rain and snow. Tomorrow's looking pretty good. And then comes Sunday. Yeah, big yeah. shift in the weather pattern coming on Sunday with rain and, uh, or excuse me, snow and colder temperatures on the way. And we'll take a look at that with the main forecast coming up. I love to crunch numbers. Let's take a look at the almanac from yesterday. We are just a little bit above average with our high of 41. Overnight low got down to 11. Uh, yesterday, our top gust of 40 miles an hour. Could still see breezy conditions here in Billings and areas east today with gusts 25 miles an hour. Along the foothills, we'll see some stronger winds, of course. Definitely could see some gusts over 40 miles an hour. In terms of snowfall for the month, we're about an inch in the hole for the year or since July 1st. We're well under where we should be a good, what, five inches or so in the hole, but we're going to try to make up some ground. A little bit of snow today, but then Sunday, Monday comes and we can really make up some ground. 34 right now at the airport feels like 23 winds out of the west at 20 miles an hour. Temperatures right now in the 40s and uh, 30s, mainly in the 30s. And we'll pretty much say what's where our highs are going to be today, 30s and 40s with some rain and snow and cloud cover on the way. But really a lot of snow on the way for Sunday. Details ahead, Andrea. All right. Well, it is a small Montana town where two worlds are colliding. On one side of the street, there's a school, and on the other, a marijuana dispensary. Q2's Casey Conlin is looking into the situation in the effort to try and get a business owner to move elsewhere. Right behind me is the former Y Stop gas station here in Roberts. It's now the new home of Mountain Organics Marijuana Dispensary. No problem there. Recreational sales have been legal here in Carbon County since January 1st. The problem lies 100 feet across Highway 212 where we find the Roberts School. There's some things you just see and they just, they stick out as a sore, sore thumb, kind of like, that's wrong. When Superintendent Alex Ader first heard back in June that the dispensary was going in, he immediately assumed that was illegal. After all, the law states that the Montana Department of Revenue cannot license a premises if it is within 500 feet of a school and on the same street. And there's the issue. We are on 106 Maple which is a street that runs east-west in front of the school. The measurement is taken from the main doors of the building, so whether they're 500 feet away is irrelevant because they don't share the same street address. So legally, Mountain Organics has every right to be here. The Cannabis Control Division in the Department of Revenue uh, have been involved since day one. They've been out here long before this place was ever opened, uh, and all, all the checks were checked. Robert Carson owns and operates the dispensary. He's been a grower in billing since January 2020. In a struggle, really. I'm just happy to break even every month to keep the lights on. Carson couldn't afford billing's rapidly rising rent prices, so when he heard about this space from a friend, he jumped on it, with the caveat that he also fix up and reopen the gas station. He says he's spent $30,000 renovating the building so far. I'm just waiting to hear back. As soon as I hear back, um, Accounts are set up with Coca-Cola and vendors, so as soon as I can, the doors open for that gas station. Ader says he really became disheartened in January when Carson put up two flags similar to this one. And now you see at the bottom of our slide, and you see two long flags about 15 feet tall stacked on top of each other that both say dispensary. I did learn about that concern at the commissioner's office this morning, and I took the signs down on my way back in town after learning that concern. Carson's biggest frustration through the whole process has been the lack of communication. Has anyone ever come over to speak to you? Not a single person, no. I didn't know about this until Thursday of last week. I don't want to ruffle feathers. This is my livelihood. If this goes down, I go down. If this goes down, I can't fund the gas station. It's all, I'm just trying to exist. As soon as our interview was over, Carson drove over to the school and met Ader for the first time. Their next conversation will be March 3rd at a special Carbon County Commissioner's meeting. Basically said, we're going to put this resolution together for additional zoning. For one real reason, to pump the brakes. Carson was given these documents, which state a resolution will be put forward to enact temporary zoning regulations for marijuana businesses. The provisions include that dispensaries must be set back 1,000 feet from a school or residential dwelling, regardless of street address. I'll close down and walk away peacefully if it comes down to that. I hope that it doesn't. 
I hope that we can find a way to meet in the middle. Casey Conlon, MTN News. There is new information this morning on the man who was shot and killed by police this week in Billings. His name is Raymond Dupree Jr. and police say that 39 year old had a criminal record, including felony drug related convictions in Yellowstone County. Dupree is accused of pointing a gun at officer Brett Hildy at a home on Central Avenue. The officer fired eight shots, killing Dupree on scene, and he is now on administrative leave as police investigate. A lame deer man faces 15 years in prison for killing a man at a Crow Agency convenience store. This is 35 year old James Fisher Sr. He pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter. He stabbed Dane Fisher, who was a standout basketball player at MSUB. The men were drinking together when they got into a fight. That's when James stabbed Dane. He is set to be sentenced on July 8th. America is eating more beef, but paying higher prices for it at the grocery store. Many Montana ranchers say they are not cashing in, though, and if something isn't done, it could put an end to family ranches altogether. So what is the beef when it comes to meat prices? Q2's Russ Riesinger takes a closer look. And every once in a while, we get some real good years and, and make pretty good money. But in, in general, it's, it's a struggle. Through the good years and bad, Steve Charter's been able to make a living by selling the cattle he raises on his 8,000-acre ranch outside of Shepherd. But Charter sees dark clouds on the horizon for family ranchers like himself, who he says are facing a perfect storm. You know, we've been getting low prices. Uh, we're in a we're in a three year drought, and now our input costs are just going through the roof, and we just you know we're not going to be able to withstand that. So um, it's it's we're at a critical time. A critical time that comes at the same time that consumers are paying record prices for beef in the grocery store. The prices we've been getting are record been record low prices. There's only four big corporations making the money. It's not the farmers and ranchers and the consumers are paying. They're not getting that benefit of like affordable food anymore. Steve and his daughter Annika, who also ranches, say they continue to see their percentage of the consumer dollars shrink. They blame a lack of competition in the meatpacking industry. They basically quit enforcing any of these monopoly laws and uh, these big companies just started gobbling up each other until it just got to be four big companies. And those four companies, JBS, Cargill, National Beef Packing, and Tyson now control almost 85% of the industry, up from just 25% a half century ago. Charter says there needs to be more medium-sized processors. At one time, there were thousands of them across the nation. Pierce Packing was one of Billings' largest employers before it shut down in the mid-80s. Most have been bought up or pushed out, and Charter believes that gives the big companies an unfair advantage to dictate prices. It's kind of like going into a uh, poker game knowing that it's not honest, but playing anyway. It's literally... The CEOs of these four companies could go out on a golf course and determine what they're going to pay for beef. Montana Senator John Tester introduced a bill to establish a special investigator for competition matters. He says there are a number of bills that Congress needs to pass, not to put meat packers out of business, but to help increase competition. The big packers aren't going to want it, and they're going to come in and they're going to lobby and tell you the world's going to end and that we're ruining the whole system. But in the end, I can tell you that we have in Montana cow-calf producers, when you talk to them, they will tell you the margins are so small that they're being forced out of business. And you can buy that. One way the charters have tried to keep going is by joining with other producers and selling their beef through the Yellowstone Valley Food Hub, a co-op that consumers can order from online for delivery or pickup. The pandemic really demonstrated the flaws in our broader system. And I think the reason we saw our sales go up so much was because it was this really poignant moment of demonstrating, like, if we don't support our local ranchers, they're going to go away. You know, we can't, Montana can't sell all its beef that way. So we need reform of the system. This is a challenge. There's some opportunities here. There's some opportunities to start feeding more cattle in the state of Montana and, and processing it here and shipping out in boxes. But the, but the system has to change. And whether or not that change happens could determine if this family ranching tradition carries on. There isn't more money to be made in the cattle industry. It doesn't make sense for my, my family to keep 
to keep at it, which is devastating to me. The future is kind of like the immediate past. It's fewer and fewer kind of far family farm. And th that's just going to continue unless we can get a bigger share of the consumer dollar. In Shepherd, I'm Russ Riesinger reporting for MTN News. All right, thanks, Russ. Well, President Joe Biden is set to speak with world leaders this afternoon about the Ukraine crisis. The president says Russia's buildup of more than 150,000 troops on Ukraine's border makes the threat of invasion very high. Meanwhile, Vice President Kamala Harris is in Germany to meet with NATO leaders about the same thing. And next week, our Secretary of State will meet with the Russian Foreign Minister to broker a peace deal. A New York judge rules that former President Donald Trump and his two older children must testify in a New York State civil investigation into his business practices. In response, the former president's lawyers say the po probe is tainted by political bias. A stopgap bill to avert a government shutdown is heading to President Biden's desk after the Senate passed it late last week. The measure will keep federal agencies afloat through March 11th. New jobless claims show an increase in unemployed people are still looking for help. Applications for unemployment benefits rose by 23,000. This comes after three straight weeks of declines, and altogether 1.6 million are collecting unemployment. The overall unemployment is still low at 4%. Well, today the Labor Department will release its monthly jobs report. A new study shows Montanans are extremely worried about the environment. Colorado College surveyed eight, hundreds of people from eight states, including Montana. Researchers found 92% of Montanans are very concerned about the upcoming wildfire season. The poll also found that people in the West expect to deal with droughts, flooding, and other environmental issues well into the future. Last year, we asked a question and we repeated it again this year to understand how voters in this important region are thinking about the future of nature. And we defined that for them as meaning our land, our water, air, and wildlife and ask them to basically tell us, is the glass half full or is it half empty? So you can see when we ask them to tell us whether they were hopeful or more worried about the future of nature, uh, increasingly we're getting some pessimistic responses. Um, last year we thought folks were feeling a little glum, uh, potentially the pandemic bleeding into their sentiments about nature as well, um, but we see that's been exacerbated this year. Well, the survey acts as a tool for policymakers to gauge attitudes towards a number of conservation issues facing the West. It is now open. A motor vehicle satellite office in Billings will make it a little bit easier for you to register your vehicle. The MVD took over this old call booth and storage closet in the first interstate arena. The office is open for vehicle registration, but that's it. The hope, though, is to decrease wait times because registering your vehicle, as we all know, can sometimes take just hours at the county courthouse. Everywhere we hear, this is like the first one where you combine a motor vehicle and an entertainment facility in the same place. As soon as people, uh, you know, find out about it, the word gets spread a little more. I believe it's going to be a very busy office. Well, the idea for the satellite office came when COVID protocols were pretty strict. You might remember at that time, only seven people were allowed to stand in line at the lobby at the courthouse. All right, thanks for watching Billings only local morning newscast. Still ahead, do you need a ride? Because we've got some of the top cars of 2022 to show you. We'll be a little bit later in the show. And of course, the time now is 6.14 on this Friday. We'll be right back.